Right now on Up With Creme, the Fox Theater is celebrating its 90th anniversary. Channing Curtis is live to give us a look at the upcoming festivities. That's right, Tim. There is so much that's happening here today at the Fox Theater as we celebrate their 90th anniversary. Coming up in just a bit, I'm going to tell you how you can join in on all of the fun that's happening here at the theater this afternoon. And Coeur d'Alene School District announcing their back to school guidelines as students start classes next week. And parents had a lot to say. Nicole Hernandez live in Coeur d'Alene right now. That's right, people on both sides of the aisle, both for mask and against mask as, school, as Coeur d'Alene schools are going back without mask mandates. And we're going to take you outside and talk the Labor Day weekend forecast. Let you know what's in stores. We all look forward to the three days we have off. Up with Crim begins now. Oh, it is that Friday feeling and we just got to say happy Friday. Good morning. Thanks so much for watching Up with Crem. I'm Tim Pham and I'm Jeremy Legu. Today is a historic birthday for one of Spokane's most iconic landmarks. Back in 1931, the theater was one of Spokane's was Spokane's largest movie theater and the first building. Get this air conditioning. Oh, I can feel it. Whew. Cool. It probably was real nice back then in the summer times. Our Channing Curtis live there now to talk about tonight's 90th birthday celebration. And Channing, I got to tell you earlier, you showed that Christmas ornament. I need oh. to get my hands on that. <laughs> I got you, Tim. You know I will bring you back an ornament. Don't yes. you even worry about it. There are all kinds of really cool souvenirs here that are for sale, so I'll bring back something for everybody. <laughs> So let me tell you a little bit about what's going on here this afternoon. So like Tim said, today is the 90th anniversary for the Fox Theater. Actually, on this very day in 1931, the theater opened to all of this grandeur. And if you take a look around me, this place is stunning. There's no other way to describe it. It is just absolutely stunning. So like I said, it was built in 1931 for just over a million dollars. And today it is now home to the Spokane Symphony. But today they're having their big celebration, so you can actually join in for free. You can come out here from 12 to 4 p.m. There are all kinds of activities going on. They're doing free self-guided tours, so you can just kind of wander around like I've been doing all morning and get to see all of the behind the scenes things that you don't normally get to see, say, if you come here to see the symphony. Another cool thing that's happening today, they have several different souvenirs for sale. Like Tim mentioned, they have Christmas ornaments, they have mugs, um, really cool uh, posters uh, made by an artist, and even a history of the Spokane Symphony, a book where the author will actually be here signing autographs. Also on hand are the Spokane Symphony, the executive director and the music director who will be talking about their upcoming season, even answering some questions from people. So it's going to be a really, really great afternoon. Like I said, it's all free from 12 to 4. Great way to spend the afternoon. Only thing, just make sure that you have your mask with you when you come inside because they are requiring that. But like I said, it's just an amazing, amazing place. What a great way to spend a Friday other than at the theater. I think it's awesome. Well, from here at the Fox Theater, I'm Channing Curtis. Now, our Jeremy Lagoo has a look at the forecast because this is a big weekend. It's our holiday weekend. Maybe a great time to spend some time outdoors. What do you think, Jeremy? Oh, absolutely. But Channing, I, I need you to do something for me while you're still there today. So I I'm a huge okay. fan of symphony. I love the symphony. And so as okay. it opens back up, I'm Dang. planning on going, but I need to know what the best seat in the house is. So you gotta, you gotta help me out. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. I'm on a mission now. All right. I will find out what the best seat is and I'm going to report back to you. All right. <laughs> test them all out for me. I gotta know. All right. But for now, let's get outside and talk weather. Sun's up early this morning and it is a beautiful start to the day. Just take a look at downtown Spokane. Oh, shining out. It is a beautiful day. It's a beautiful morning. Everything is awesome. Everything's cool when you're a part of a team. We're a team here on Up With Crime. 71 at Spokane International Airport, but around town temps are in the mid to upper 40s. That's a big difference if you're asking me. For some reason, the mid to upper 40s and 50 are just two wildly different numbers in my book. 48 in Coeur d'Alene, 41 in Sandpoint, and 46 there in Moses Lake. When it comes to air quality, we remain good early on this morning, and we likely trend good then toward moderate as we head through the day on Saturday. Nice clear skies overhead as we kick things off on this Friday morning and we hang on to sunshine all day long. Temps up near 80. So if you're a hot coffee person, nice. If you're an iced coffee person, 
yeah, okay, we like you too. And this afternoon's for you is those temps. Trend on the warm side. Tim's looking at me. Tim, no, we love you. I just gave him a mean glare. <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Okay, well, this morning, the U.S. is now reporting more than a quarter of the world's new COVID-19 cases. As children head back to school, the CDC says new studies show COVID doesn't appear to be more severe in children, but they say more of them are getting sick in communities with lower vaccination rates. As COVID cases rise in children, Coeur d'Alene School District is easing up some of their COVID-19 protocols for the school year. Nicole Hernandez joins us live in Coeur d'Alene. And Nicole, how are parents reacting to the changes made at last night's school board meeting? Yeah, really people on both sides of the aisle here with this situation. So right now I'm live at Winston Elementary School right behind me where obviously it's a quiet morning here now, but coming on Tuesday, the school will be bustling with students coming back to school. And as students in the Coeur d'Alene and Post Falls get back to school, one thing they're not doing is no mask requirements. They're not doing contact tracing or quarantine protocols either. So as soon as that announcement came through, there were people on both sides Sorry, there are people on both sides of the bait. You can hear that booing there, both anti and pro mask protesters rallying against each other at the meeting. Both sides argued over the science of masks in particular. Last year, Coeur d'Alene schools started the year requiring masks, but despite a recommendation from the medical director of the Idaho Division of Public Health, the board decided not to reopen this fall with the mask mandate. The CDA school district also had numerous COVID-19 outbreaks last year. You know, trust the professionals, trust the doctors, trust your nursing staff. I, I see Kootenai Medical Center making a cry for help, and we need to answer that. We need to be, you know, come together as a community. Now, Board Chair Jen Brumley addressed pro-mask parent concerns about the lack of masking. He said that in part, I don't feel that I should be making a decision for the students on what is happening in the community. Now across state lines in Washington, we are seeing uh, all schools required to have mask mandates. And coming up in the next half hour, we're hearing from a doctor who was one of hundreds that's expressing concern to the school district about a potential spike in COVID-19 cases, particularly in kids. Live in Coeur d'Alene, I'm Nicole Hernandez. It is time for your morning rush. More news in less time. Officers responded to a shooting downtown at the Bank of America building. It happened on Thursday near Riverside and Howard Street. When police arrived, the victim and suspect were gone. Officers later found the victim and brought him to Sacred Heart. Police are still looking for the suspect. Security from the bank called and said that there had been a shooting. Um, officers were very nearby. It was our downtown NRO units. Uh, they uh, happened to see the the victim uh, who was uncooperative. Uh, we, were, we were able to locate the victim and, and get him to the hospital. The victim does not have any life threatening injuries. Well, the cancellation of HoopFest devastated many and some players were frustrated they couldn't get full refunds. Now that's changing. HoopFest announcing players can donate their registration fee or get a full refund. Previously, teams were offered only a 20% refund. We now know what may have started the Idler fire burning near Moscow, Idaho. Fire investigators found out it started inside a barn, but are still trying to find out the cause. However, witnesses say it may have started from a battery charger hooked to a boat inside the barn. One house was destroyed in the fire's path. As of today, the fire has burned 116 acres and is 67% contained. A $10,000 reward is now active for the safe return of the missing five-year-old Fruitland, Idaho boy, Michael Vaughn. Michael has been missing since July 27th. Fruitland Police Chief says the reward was donated by an anonymous person who just wants to see Michael back home with his family. It was a pretty special deal there as we haven't had that. This is um, it's a significant event for us and uh, that we're hoping that you know having that available might uh, motivate somebody to come forward with some information. So far, investigators received nearly 400 tips in regards to Michael's invest uh, it, 400 tips in regard to Michael. Investigators are encouraging anyone with more information to contact police. 
popular Spokane restaurant Ruins is winding down to close for good. In a social media post, they uh, say that starting on Monday, things will look a little bit different. There will be a smaller menu and an order at the counter style of service, and they will be doing things as long as it takes to transition out of their current space. They estimate Ruins will be closed by the end of the year. This Saturday and Sunday, there will be no reservations and they will have a classic Ruins menu. That's your morning rush. More news in less time. Let us know what's happening in your neighborhood by using the hashtag up with creme on social media. Still ahead, a local husband and wife just faced off in a national competition to create the best burger. And one of them came out on top and won the grand prize. I'm a huge pickle lover. I've always been a huge pickle lover. So my concept was that this should be pickle forward is what I'd like to call it. Pickle forward burger. So it's, it's all about the pickle. Well, the duo are now teachers turned burger artists and one of them is now at a local restaurant serving up their pickle masterpiece.